because I, I, I think this is a fairly educated audience in, in a sense of understanding um, the prevalence of mental ill health. So one in four of us, we all know somebody that's significantly impacted um, by poor mental health. Um, so, so this is not a, um, a, 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 a mental health services are not something that can sit on the edge. Um, if the current government strategy in health without mental health says it all, doesn't it? Really? Um, World Health Organization says depression is going to be the leading cause of disability by um, 2020 and cost to the UK. Um, th this issue here that 75% of people um, with a mild to moderate mental illness or in need of, of some kind of support for their mental health don't receive any help at all. Um, and that, that's quite staggering and that's one of the reasons that the White Wall came about. Um, stigma is one of the main barriers for that, um, but it's not the only one. There's a lot of reasons why, um, why people aren't receiving support. Um, and then that, that's really quite scary. That people with poor mental health die, uh, die between 15 and 20 years and earlier. And that's not from suicide, that's not from mental um, health related conditions, that's from physical health conditions. Um, so this is a massive problem. Um, so, in terms of the technology that's around there in mental health, um, I've picked two publications that you might, if this is an area of interest that you want to do a bit more reading around, I would commend you to go and read. The Mental Health Network of the NHS Confederation um, have published two papers now. This was the first discussion paper um, back in January uh, 2013. Um, and it split um, the technology at that time into two categories into what it described as enabling technology. So technology that is helping our current practice um, be, more, be more efficient. So things like Buddy and Moodscope that help people to monitor their moods um, and therefore um, Buddy specifically links to then your uh, practitioner who you might be receiving therapy from um, and it helps, uh, helps uh, get more out of that therapy. Um, uh, therapeutic interventions online, so computerized CBT packages like these in the blues, and psychology online um, are delivering uh, psychological therapies, CBT, through instant messaging, um, with a lot of evidence behind it. Let's not think this is something new, there's a lot of evidence behind this, um, uh, and it's being used more and more widely. Um, and then it split. Um, uh, uh, the other category was transformative technology. So this is about actually turning mental health care on its head and transforming the way it's delivered, um, rather than simply using technology to, to enable slightly more efficient. So things like um, Bosch um, Healthcare uh, have, a, have a health buddy that you have in, in the home that helps you manage. This is really about helping people self-manage. We know um, that the NHS is under more and more financial pressure. Um, we know that demand is increasing and um, actually we need to be using technology to help people self-manage better to reduce demand on the system, which doesn't mean that we can reduce the, the, the number of interventions or the workforce that we have. It means that we can target that much more effectively to the people who need it um, when we enable, uh, we allow as many people as possible to self-manage their own health and well-being. Um, and then there are online portals like My Health Locker that's South London and Maudsley. Um, have that help people take care of their, take charge of their own care plan, um, again empowering and enable people. And um, the use of social media, so tr tr mental health trusts are using social media um, to really transform the way they communicate both with um, people who are using their services and with their, their staff as well, and there's some really good examples of that and patients like me. Um, so that was the kind of initial discussion paper that the Mental Health Network brought out. Um, and then this, um, if you only read one thing, I would suggest that you read this. This came out at the end of last year um, and, and really looks at, um, specifically in mental health, where technology is at, um, what's available now and where it's going. Um, so I don't know if you know how many health apps there are out there, 100,000 um, health apps. Um, now this is available on, uh, on, on iTunes and other app stores. Um, and the difficulty as a health consumer navigating those um, is that um, there's a very little quality filter or regulation of these apps. Um, and uh, the NHS um, tried to do so with their, um, their app library, so they vetted a certain number of apps and there are 87 apps that have been vetted and available on um, NHS Choices. I'm not sure as a consumer that many people know to go and look there necessarily, um, but, but the work they've done is, is a good start. Um, and there's for much further work going on as a result of the, um, uh, the National Information Board's paper that came out in last year to take that on to the next stage. Um, uh, the paper talks about social media, uh, um, social media, the use of that, 
Um, our, our patients, if we're running quite traditional services, our patients are out there talking about their conditions on Twitter and they are finding support and linking with peers online. Um, and, and the danger of that is that actually there are some quite dangerous spaces online. There are pro-anorexia sites um, that people can find um, and there are, um, uh, there are suicide packs and there are online. So, so this is a very unmoderated space and we must be aware of those risks um, and of knowing that our patients are accessing this and therefore providing access to safe and, and then the case studies that look at in here I think would be very interesting to go and have a look at um, and they're divided into three categories, self-support, so um, Surrey and Borders did a, a fantastic app that was um, designed by a service user um, of their early intervention psychosis service and um, that maps a journey through the service called My Journey. Um, then you've got digitally integrated services like Big White Wall which I'll show you in, in more detail um, and then you've got a lot of health hubs in these um, and health ecosystems. Um, uh, that, that, are, uh, that, are, that are out there now, that are bringing together academia, um, industry, and 